gut says Miami is going to win, and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. A lot of books and outside of the New York area, the uh, the Canes are actually favored in game one of this series. I'm seeing it right now. I'm looking. I see a minus 115 Canes, Rangers minus 105. I like the six and seven games prop like I, like I took with Boston, Toronto, which we now know is going to cash. Uh, I think it's got a chance to go the distance. It's going to be a long, tough, close series. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. The Cam Rising stuff last year with Utah? Three months of pretending he was questionable with a torn ACL? Ridiculous. It's a lot of gray right now when it comes to this stuff. And, and it, we really are. When people say we're in like the second or third inning of sports betting, that's why I agree. Because there's so many of those situations that are very, very difficult to explain to a novice. Game time decisions. Only on Sports Grid. A surprise winner on the PGA Tour. Taylor Hendrick ends up winning his first PGA Tour win. He was pretty darn lucky to win. Ben Coles should have won that tournament. Also seeking his first PGA Tour victory, he went into the 18th hole, the easiest hole on the golf course, with a one-shot lead, and he was there in two, just less than 30 feet from the cup. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. Good morning. Welcome to Fantasy Sports Today here on Sports Grid. I'm Craig Mish along with Davis Maddock as we touch on everything happening in fantasy baseball. For the next two hours, Davis and I going through all the waiver wire ads, the drops, the players who are hot, the players who are not, as we get ready for Memorial Day, which of course is coming up next weekend, which is really the time to determine where your fantasy baseball team is. Also some big injuries to get to as well. We'll cover the NBA as well. Adam Kaufman will be with us. We'll set some daily lineups. Go over some odds as well. And uh, Davis, you know, honestly, like I, I definitely thought that today we'd be talking about Paul Skeens to start off the show and how much we should be trading for him or what he's worth in Dynasty Leagues. Like he could be the most valuable Dynasty League pitcher we've seen in a long time. What an incredible performance yesterday. But I got to tell you, we can't do that at the start of this show because we saw something historical happen in sports yesterday, which – a professional athlete in the same day on the same morning of an event arrested and then ended up playing in the game. I mean, I, I, or in this case, the PGA Tour. I, I can't ever recall anything happening like this. And the fact that Scotty Scheffler, for those of you who have not been paying attention, I mean, this has been the number one story in sports, was arrested in the morning and then played in uh, the later morning and actually had a really good round and is in contention to win the PGA Tour. Davis, like, I, I kind of felt like we got to start here today, even though the only things that are actionable are, are, you know, sort of betting on the PGA Championship. But I felt like we would be doing a disservice to not ask you your thoughts on this. I, I mean, I, I'm going to guess something else like this has happened, and I'm just a prisoner of the moment. But my gosh, nothing comes to mind. And, and the way he performed at that high level, too, incredible. I mean, it def I mean, I definitely think it speaks a lot to Scotty Scheffler because I'm just imagining what my golf game would uh, would be like out there had I had that, uh, you know, that crazy of a morning. He did his uh, his press conference yesterday and he says, oh, you know, I, I basically saw myself on, you know, get up on ESPN and they're talking about the situation. And then he said that he saw the tournament had to be pushed back. So there was there was an incident on the grounds, which is why the police presence was uh, heightened to begin with. There was a, there was an auto accident where basically someone got like ran over by a shuttle, not particularly great situation for the PGA in that regard. It is 
I mean, the closest analogy that you can draw to something like this happening in golf would be, you know, an old John Daly incident or, of course, the, the Tiger Woods Thanksgiving incident. But all of those incidents were not during a tournament. They were not, you know, yeah. before a round was about to start, not entering into the grounds. And, yeah, I mean, Scotty coming in there, I mean, Scotty's literally in a jail cell. I'm sitting there looking at the odds board being like, well, what should the fair odds be on this board if Scotty doesn't play? Then they announced that the tournament's getting pushed back an hour anyway. And I'm like, you know what? He's just going to play. Because, like, in my mind, I'd actually weirdly enough just read this. There was a long profile about Scotty in The Athletic that came out on Thursday. And I was like, you know what? I think Scotty's just going to come back and play. I just don't think there's any way this guy's withdrawing from the PGA Championship for this. So I didn't make any additional wagers. But uh, what a just an unbelievable story. Yeah. And, and by the way, the best golfer in the world too. You know, it, it's it's not like Sepp Straka got arrested or anything like that, you know? Like, I mean, the best right. golfer in the world right before his round gets arrested and then goes out and he's near the top of the leaderboard. Uh, you know, Xander is leading. Colin Morikawa is second um, as, at the moment. But as you can see with the odds, Scotty Scheffler right now is in contention with a potential to win. And so naturally, we'll cover this for you, I am sure, all day long here on Sports Grid, as this is uh, no doubt the, the top story, one of the top stories of the year, I think, thus far, especially if Scheffler wins the ratings on Sunday. Oh my gosh, they're going to be incredible. All right, let's get to some fantasy baseball. Davis, before we get to the injuries, let's do Paul Skeens here real quick because we're seeing unprecedented stuff. Uh, Skeens strikes out, if I'm not mistaken, the first six batters yesterday uh, of the game against the Cubs. May have been seven, actually. Um, you know, went on to throw a uh, no hitter. <laughs> And then was taken out of the game. And he did this against the same team that he faced the first time out, which makes it even more impressive. The Cubs hitters knew a little bit what to expect out of him. From a from a dynasty perspective, it's it's historic in a way that I don't know that you could put a good trade together where I would give up Paul Skeens. Like I rarely say that. I'm always like a sell high guy, get as much as you can. But I just don't know about this guy, Davis. Like, this seems to me to be the next generational, uh, you know, Strasburg at the time, Pedro Martinez maybe at the time when he was going through it. I just don't recall seeing anything like this in a while. So I'm going to hold on to Paul Skeens for a bit. Well, uh, I mean, don't let me uh, don't let me rain on your parade as it pertains to Paul Skeens and Dynasty. But what I would say is if you could use Paul Skeens to acquire one of the greatest hitters in baseball. So if you could get Otani, uh, Acuna, I mean, yeah, Judge is probably getting up there, so probably not as much. Aaron Judge, uh, Kyle Tucker. I, I mean, I, I would tell you right now, I would 100% do that because what do we know about starting pitchers in baseball? Like, they're, they're, what, you know, what's the, there is no such thing as a pitching prospect, right? That's the, the real old baseball saying, which is just highlights the variance in these guys. Not that Paul Skeens is not going to be incredible every time he's available for the next decade. But if you let me bet right now, even money both ways, will Paul Skeens miss a year of his career due to injury at some time yeah, over the sure. next 10 years? I, I would take it. I, I would stone cold take that money. He was awesome to watch. I, I thought something that must have been rather frustrating for him personally would have been how many times at LSU do you think Paul Skeens went 140 pitches in a game? You know, just because that's just, just what you do in college baseball. He's got a no hitter going. He's at a hundred pitches. I mean, he's probably tired, but I bet he's not like, Oh, my arms falling off. I, I, I got to get out of here. That might, that must've been, you know, just a little bit uh, uh, internally frustrating for him, but he was unbelievable. I mean, I, I've been saying this to Pharrell, who wants to talk to me about Paul Skeens every single day on Pharrell <laughs> Coast to Coast. I was like, there's a chance Paul Skeens gets called up from AAA and is immediately the best pitcher in baseball. Because right now, with the pitcher injuries, I, like if, if someone asked you who is the best pitcher in baseball right now, you'd have to like think about it a little bit. There's not like an automatic answer to who the best guy is in baseball. And I, I think there's a non-zero chance at Skeens. Yeah. I mean, Scooble has been amazing and, and I think he's going to win the Cy Young. Yeah. But I, I think after that, I mean, in the NL, you could do it very easily. The AL may be a little bit different. Uh, injuries in baseball, in case you missed it over the last 24 hours, man, tough scene for Jung Ho Lee. 
who uh, looked really good for the Giants. They paid him a lot of money. He's going to miss the season. How are the Giants going to react to this? I don't know. I mean, this is a very, very bad injury for them. Same with Max Muncy. He goes on the injured list. Uh, Hayward uh, is activated. Max Scherzer is not going to pitch for a bit. Not a surprise there. And uh, the Dodgers lose Emmett Sheehan. He's undergoing Tommy John, going to miss the rest of the season there. So, you know, certainly a lot of injuries there, Davis, naturally. Uh, Lee, though, was a player that the Giants took a huge swing for and wasn't hitting a ton of home runs. It's hard to hit home runs there, but he looked like a really capable player. And with him and Soler being out, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like the Giants are, you know, they, they kind of like spent money, Davis, because they had to, because they didn't get Judge. They didn't get Correa, you know, like they didn't get the, they didn't get uh, Otani, like they didn't get the big names. And unfortunately, this is just going to come back to bite them. I think Lee's future is bright, but this is a tough one for them. It is a tough one. I mean, look, leading off the show with injuries, it always stinks. It's it's not it's not what we want to have to to have to be missing these guys. And and I mean, look, how about how about how about Scherzer being moved to the sixty day IL like that? That should be uh, – I mean, he's 39 years old. I, I think he might even turn 40 this season, moving to the 60-day I, – I, I hope that we see him back pitching in Major League Baseball again at some point, but, but obviously there is no guarantee of that given the surrounding circumstances. Yeah, I, I, Davis, I think the Rangers would take DeGrom and Scherzer back September 1st and just make a run for it in the end and get those – I mean, honestly, I, why not? NBA, they're doing the same thing, right? Guys are sitting out months, coming back to us for the playoffs. Yep. Why not? All right, coming up next, this week's best in fantasy baseball. We'll have it for you when we return next here on Fantasy Sports Today. Look at the Denver Nuggets and say, whoa, just a week ago, they were that minus 115 or so price. Now we're looking at them at a 7 to 1 price. Any chances the Nuggets can actually come back? That could be scoring six or seven games, so I think that could be a little bit of a tighter spread between those two. But when you got those two guys, those two monsters, and, and Towns and, and Edwards, it's just really hard. The early line, only on Sports Grid. Every missed call, the entire game, whether it's a charge or a block or, a, a, you know, a, a deflection that was wrong or a foul that should have been called that wasn't called or vice versa, give me a 48-minute report. And people that will understand that there's so many mistakes that the referees make over the course of the game that referees, ready folks, just don't decide the outcome. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. The early line. Magical and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions. Is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In game live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late sort Night. Of has let down, written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Welcome back to Fantasy Sports today. Time to talk about who's hot in fantasy baseball. Davis Maddock, Craig Mish with you. We got Adam Kaufman coming up to do some NBA as we get ready for the semi final wrap ups in the East and the West. Davis, let's start off. I, I guess we, uh, you know, we've been talking about this now for a month. It finally does feel like the Astros have woken up a little bit. They called up this first baseman, 
Uh, Joey Laprofito, he has hit very well for them, and he's gotten some help too. And maybe this is just the beginning of the Astros now run back to at least try to make the playoffs because it does appear they're very much within striking distance. And I'm very happy to see this one, Davis, that Alex Bregman has finally gotten hot. He said he made some adjustments at the plate. Uh, he's a free agent at the end of the season. I was very surprised with his first month plus of the year because, uh, you know, look, this is a player that's still relatively young in the game, plays a premium position at third base. And for fantasy, you're just kind of like hanging on, hanging on, hanging on. You're like waiting. And then finally comes alive a little bit. I have a feeling this is the beginning of good things to come for Houston. Now, I know that they've had some pitching issues and, of course, some injuries like everybody else has as well. But this offense is just way too good to be performing like they had been. I mean, way too good. Look, they they had this absolute nightmare start to the season. They're now 20 and 25. So they're behind uh, actually every AL Central team other than the Chicago White Sox. But then there are two games behind uh, Boston. They're only four games behind the Rays. And I mean, really, they're only four games back in the division. So you look at, uh, you know, for a long time, it was like the Houston Astros. We, we, we've been playing for two months. I got nine wins. What's the deal? And I just think it is as simple as the team is too good. They have too many ultra talented players like Alex Bregman, who did start the year brutally. I mean, as of right now, Bregman is still like way below his career averages and everything way below his career average in OBP, OPS, slugging, all that stuff. Um, and in fact, this, if he didn't turn things around, it would be the first year he ever was, you know, worse than league average in OPS plus. So I, I think this is exactly what it looks like, which is Bregman figured out whatever is wrong in his swing. You know, maybe he had a shoulder injury, but you know, something that we don't know about. Maybe he just, I don't know. Maybe he was stressed out. Maybe he just had a kid and hasn't been getting any sleep. I, I don't know. But yeah, Alex Bregman, great player. One of the 20 best players in the American league probably. And now he's playing like it. So I, I think the buy low window on Alex Bregman would have, uh, would have closed. Yeah, good to hang on to Bregman. Uh, this is a bit of a surprise. Kevin Pillar, you know, who could have very easily not played baseball this year, is playing for the Angels. Of course, uh, you know, Mike Trout's injury is basically one of the reasons why uh, Pillar has been on fire. Now, look, the Angels are not a good team, Davis, and I, and I think that they're one of those teams that have to make some really big decisions on Trout, by the way, uh, you know, coming up in a month or two to see what they do. But look, Pilar, uh, for fantasy purposes, you could just ride him for the next, I don't know, what would you say, like a month, month and a half if he continues to play. But inevitably, him playing like this, all it's going to do is get himself traded probably to be a fourth outfielder somewhere else. But I guess for the time being, you just keep playing him, stealing bases like crazy too. Where's this coming from? I mean, true. I, I suppose the deal with, uh, with Kevin Pilar is that he has the most unbelievable splits. I mean, he is like... 40% better when he has the platoon advantage versus not like for his career. And we're talking about a guy who has over, uh, I, I believe over 4,500 plate appearances in major league baseball. So I think we can feel pretty confident. The splits are real. His OPS plus in his career versus right-handing pitching 92, his OPS plus versus left-handed pitching is 119. It's, it's really kind of incredible how much better he is, which is why you prefer him to be your fourth outfielder not a guy who has to play every single day. Obviously, that's a pretty valuable real-life skill set. I mean, even at Pilar's age, to be able to hit with the platoon advantage that well. But for fantasy baseball, it means that you end up seeing him only get, you know, 10 plate appearances a week, per se. It's, it's kind of one of those funny intricacies of fantasy baseball and of the schedule where, like, if you're in a daily lineups move, sure, Kevin Pillar, great guy. You know, the, the, the Angels have a lefty, you throw him in there. The Angels have a righty, you leave him on the bench. But, uh, you know, it's particularly in the high stakes leagues, you don't have that option. So, you know, good good for Kevin Pillar. Seems like a good guy, but I, I would not be, um, you know, adding him on a ton of my teams. Yeah, I would agree. Okay, let's let's now look at pitchers. Same pitchers, by the way. One of the same pitchers we've been talking about for weeks, and I, and I guess the shoe is just not going to drop here. I don't know, but, man, give the White Sox credit. They identified Eric Fetty and said, hey, let's go grab this guy, see what he can do for us. He sort of reinvented himself overseas. He's still pitching well. And uh, Davis, look, I, I mean, this time of the year, you just never know who's going to go on a hot streak. The White Sox playing better baseball. The Rockies playing better baseball. The Marlins have won three games in a row. I, I guess I guess the baseball season is long in the end. And, uh, you know, Miami's has three straight shutouts. The White Sox have been playing well. 
uh, you know, I probably, I look, I'm still with you on this guy. I, I can't believe that this is what, what he is. All of a sudden he's great now, but he's had a good year. I mean, look, if, if there was something underlying why he has been performing so well, I would buy it. If it was like, he's striking more guys out, he's getting a ton of ground. I mean, his profile actually, Craig, it looks worse than his last time when he was, when he was with the nationals, he's actually striking out fewer guys than when he was with the nationals. He's actually walking more guys than the last time he was with the nationals. His hard hit rate is higher. His ground ball rate is lower. His fly ball rate is up. Like just nothing about the surroundings peripheral statistics leads me to believe this is like a real change in performance. So, I mean, I, I guess if you bank the stats already, you know, you just absolutely had to make a move in your 15 team league or your AL only league, then sure. Like fine. I, you know, obviously there's no issue with that, but I would not be holding on to Eric Fetty and being like, yeah, this is the guy, you know, who's gonna, who's gonna fix my team. Yeah. Finally, uh, Michael Walk signed with the Royals in the off season Really nice week for him. He doesn't get deep enough into the games, Davis, and he certainly doesn't have the stuff that he used to have, but the Royals have been really good. They're hitting, they're pitching well, back end of the bullpen. So that's helped him out as well. Uh, strikeouts ticked up here recently. Yeah, he did. He does have 13 strikeouts in his most recent two starts. Weirdly enough, his ERA actually is higher right now than it was with the Padres and the Red Sox. He just is running into some more wins because he kind of getting – just kind of getting lucky. I would, I mean, if I would rather have Waka than Fetty, but again, probably, you know, this is what we've been talking about. We're just guys who are available guys who throw five innings every five days are kind of valuable. So I guess Waka has some value in that sense. All right. Well, coming up next, it's not all roses for some hitters in fantasy. Davis and I will go over this week's struggling players next. Look at the Denver Nuggets and say, whoa, just a week ago, they were that minus 115 or so price. Now we're looking at them at a 7 to 1 price. Any chances the Nuggets can actually come back? That could be still in six or seven games, so I think that could be a little bit of a tighter spread between those two. But when you got those two guys, those two monsters, and, and Towns and, and Edwards, it's just really hard. The early line, only on Sports Grid. Every missed call, the entire game, whether it's a charge or a block or, a, a, you know, a, a deflection that was wrong or a foul that should have been called that wasn't called or vice versa. Give me a 48-minute report and people that will understand that there's so many mistakes that the referees make over the course of the game that referees, ready folks, just don't decide the outcome. Betting above the rim only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. The early the magical line. and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not, not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions. Luka is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In Game Live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late Night. This sort of written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Welcome back to Fantasy Sports today here on Sports Credit. It is not all roses, as I just said, for some players in fantasy baseball. And we're going to go through them here on the show. Davis Maddock, Craig Mish with you on Fantasy Sports today. Hope your weekend's off to a good start. We'll keep it going for you. Davis, what is going on here with Jake Cronenworth? I guess he was playing a little bit better 
than his numbers last season. You may remember two years ago, uh, Davis, Jake Cronenworth was thought to be like one of the major up-and-coming keepers in fantasy. Interestingly enough, the Padres went out and acquired Luis Arise to play some second base and first base. And, uh, you know, Padres just got swept, if I'm not mistaken, by the Rockies this week. Did that really happen? Cronenworth, 231, one home run, three RBIs, six strikeouts. I got to say, Davis, I, I know how you feel about teams that kind of go for it. So I know you're never going to rip the Padres because they're always trying and they're always spending and they're always like doing different. And I get it. But I don't know that I could ever figure out what this team's trying to do, man. I, I just got to be honest. Like, I, I can't ever sort out <laughs> the direction of the Padres. It feels like they're up, they're down, they're trying, they're not, they're trading, the Soto, goodbye. Like, I, I, they're getting Soto, trading Soto. So, um, well, that's yeah, that's more the issue I mean, with the Padres, yeah. right? They they don't pick a direction. It's like I do love when teams go for it. Like I'm begging the Cincinnati Reds last year, like trade for a pitcher. I'm begging the Orioles to trade for Corbin Burns, and then the Padres, Craig, they go for it, but it's like then they then they get scared of going for it, and then they let Juan Soto go while paying all this money to you know to Tatis and Machado and uh, Xander Bogarts. Like it's just a they're a very weird or it's just a very weird organization, you know, and they're, they're like changing ownership. And so it's just, it's just a little bit, uh, it's just a little bit of a mess as it pertains to Cronenworth. I mean, actually I wouldn't be, if, if you're using him as kind of like uh, I guess he's like a super utility guy. Cause he's eligible at corner and at middle infield. So that's, I, and, and outfield uh, depending on your league settings. So that is, um that's pretty nice. He just this year he's not been able to generate any power, you know, and, and that's gonna be that's gonna be an issue. But I think by and large he's fine. He's actually striking out a little bit less. His hard hit rate is up a little bit more. But you know, he I, I suppose Cronenworth is kind of that trap in fantasy baseball where you're never gonna get twenty five home runs. You're never gonna get more than eight steals. So if he's not hitting two eighty and the Padres are not awesome around him, and he's not getting to 90-90 in runs and, and, and RBIs, you know, kind of what, what's the point? You know, what's the difference between him and Darian Blanco in terms of uh, assets for your fantasy baseball team? It's like he just doesn't, he doesn't really impact anything that much. Yeah, no, I, I would say so. And again, the Padres are always tinkering and adding and subtracting. Uh, the Tigers, uh, Davis, the Tigers are actually playing much better this season. It's not because of their offense, and that has been on display. As I mentioned, Miami shut them out two times this week. Uh, you know, Riley Green is off to a good start. I think he's going to be fine, Davis, but the Tigers, I mean, don't look at those offensive numbers for them because it is hideous. Uh, Green, 200, three RBIs, six strikeouts in the past week. Javi Baez, your favorite. He's batting like ninth, striking out like every single time he's up. Uh, Tigers probably one of those teams going to have to like rework how they do it because their pitching's actually been good. They have been. I mean, Riley Green... He's got he's got nine home runs. Uh, if, I, if I'm he's looking good. to say something kind about Riley yeah. Green, he's got he's got nine home runs. That's strong. No stolen bases. He did chip in seven stolen bases for you last year. The uh, by the way, I mean this is kind of neither here nor there. But do you remember when we were so startled about the stolen base stuff um, from the start of last season with the uh, with mm-hmm. the rule changes and the base size changes and all that? And it, it I mean it's it's come down a little bit. You know teams are not running like crazy. It's also partly. Um, you know, teams just are less teams even like to steal bases because of the the associated risk, which which I hate. I love stolen bases. Yeah, and finally, uh, Logan Gilbert, tough two starts, Davis, but I'm not particularly worried unless there's an injury that I don't know about here. I just look at the past week and say, hey, uh, you know, tip your cap a little bit if you're Gilbert to the other team. Uh, bottom line is strikeouts, 11 strikeouts and 10 and uh, uh, two-thirds. The ZRA was nine, but that'll get better. I'm not worried. Yes, I mean, come on, Logan Gilbert, like we're talking about a five-year track record of being one of the 15 best pitchers in the American League. At, like, this is the type of guy to look at and say, there's just no reason. I mean, it's May. It's May 18th. We we can settle down and take a deep breath about guys who have been this good for that long. You know, And if, if he ends up having a bad year because he just has a bad, crappy luck year, it is what it is. There's nothing you can do about it, but uh, you're not you're not selling low on Logan Gilbert. No, you're not. All right, coming up next, for those of you hitting the waiver wire this weekend, we're going to give you some options. Less than 50% owned players in 12-team leagues. Give you some options right here on Fantasy Sports Today. Also, don't forget, coming up, Adam Kaufman with a preview of the NBA Little Daily Fantasy as well. Don't go away. We'll be right back.
look at the Denver Nuggets and say, whoa, just a week ago, they were that minus 115 or so price. Now we're looking at them at a 7 to 1 price. Any chances the Nuggets can actually come back? That could be still six or seven games, so I think that could be a little bit of a tighter spread between those two. But when you got those two guys, those two monsters and, and Towns and, and Edwards, it's just really hard. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. Every missed call, the entire game, whether it's a charge or a block or a, a you know a, a deflection that was wrong or a foul that should have been called that wasn't called or vice versa, give me a 48 minute report and people that will understand that there's so many mistakes that the referees make over the course of the game that referees, ready folks. Just don't decide the outcome. Betting above the rim only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Your 24 7 sports wagering network. The early the line. Magical and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell, coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not, not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions. Luca is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In-game live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late sort Night. This let down, written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Welcome back to Fantasy Sports today here on Sports Grid. Time to take a look at the waiver wire, especially in leagues that are shallow. 12-team leagues, maybe you're playing in a 14-team league. These are consensus roster owned less than 50% in fantasy leagues. So let's take a look at it, Davis, and start off with the Pittsburgh Pirates. And uh, Connor Joe playing a little bit uh, first base outfield. You know, certainly has gotten his numbers up this season. 296, six home runs, 22 runs driven in, 27 strikeouts. He's playing quite a bit of everywhere and a little bit more, maybe even Davis. I know that he's got great splits against lefties, but uh, this Rowdy Telez that they signed in the offseason to play first base, if I'm not mistaken, has not really played up to snuff. So Joe is getting even some extra playing time there. Uh, you know, Pirates you know, seem like they're kind of middling around, you know, still feel sort of like have a chance here. But uh, this is this is kind of projecting right now to be Joe's best fantasy season if he keeps it up. Which is, I mean, obviously that's pretty startling because he was a member of the uh, the Colorado Rockies, so he got to play half his games at uh, at Coors. So you would obviously think, oh, he must have been he must have been awesome. That I mean, his career high in home runs actually came last season, playing his home games at the uh, PNC. Same with steals. Uh, he had 11 home runs last year in 472 plate appearances. He's already up to six home runs. This is his best career season by OPS plus. He is striking out less he is walking a little bit less which would lead me to indicate he probably has done a launch angle change I mean a lot of the times when you see both strikeouts and walks go down that means guys are are more consistently generating good contact and I mean look maybe it took him a year being out of Colorado to change his swing a little bit but I do love these guys who are multi-position eligible and I and for fantasy I love left-handed hitters because left-handed hitters uh, particularly if they can play two spots in the lineup. I mean, you know on uh, on Sunday night when you're setting your lineup for fantasy baseball, you're pretty much going to get the plate appearances, right? I mean, you're just you're just, there's not really going to be very many scenarios where he only plays four games in a week. So I I do like spending a little bit here on uh, on Connor Joe. All right, well, Davis's guy has showed up on the waiver wire. How about this? Finally, we've waited this long to actually see something. And we've seen it this season from Joe Adele, and it's not even anything that you can really even point to, Davis, because he's gotten his chances. I know I've heard this narrative, oh, he's finally getting a chance to play. Are you kidding me? He's had a chance to play like three years in a row. 
Uh, I don't know if he'll keep it up. I don't know, but he's certainly worth picking up at the moment. Seven home runs, 20 runs driven in, seven steals. The projection, probably the highest you'll ever see over the course of uh, Adele's career. I guess you have to wonder at this point, is this legit? Like, is this the Joe Adele of a 240, 20 homer, 25 stolen base season? If so, he becomes a huge fantasy asset. I just don't know if what I'm seeing is real. I mean... You know, Craig, you and I have been doing this show for uh, for four years now, right? Pretty much talked about Joe Adele the entire time. You would think for how long we've been talking about Joe Adele that this guy is like 32 years old, that it's like that he's on, you know, he's on his fourth team. He's been down. To, no, I mean, Joe Adele's 25 years old. There are there are plenty of prospects who, who don't even come up right until they're 25, 26 years old, where they never even get that exposure. What has been Joe Adele's problem in Major League Baseball? He cannot find a way to stop striking out. Like, this is, uh, you know, bad Aaron Judge, Giancarlo Stanton stuff where he's striking out 35% of the time. I mean, his career K rate is 33%. What's different about this year? Why is he playing a little bit better this year? He's striking out 24% of the time. Pretty, pretty big difference between striking out. I mean, last year, he struck out on 40% of his plate appearances, down to 25%. Line drive rates up, hard hit rates up, fly ball rate is about the same. He is uh, pulling the ball less, which again, uh, if you're pulling it a little bit less and hitting it to the opposite field a little bit more, what does that tell you? He's just seeing the ball a little bit better. He's just got a little bit more control over what he's doing at the plate. You know, do I want to say, oh, Joe Adele is here. You're getting 31 home runs and 25 steals. I mean, obviously I want to say that. I don't think I will. Because, you know, I've, I've, I've been down this road with, uh, with Joe Adele before. But he definitely is, I mean, what do you think you have to spend to get on him in a 12-team in a league? Like, very little. I think he's a pretty good speculative yeah. ad. Yeah, and I think most people won't spend because, you know, a lot of people have been burned by him before. But, look, you know, certainly you could see him being picked up in a lot of leagues. Now, uh, Brandon Marsh is uh, doing Brandon Marsh-type things, which is striking out, like, insane numbers. But when he makes contact, the ball goes far. I, I just think at this point, Davis, it's fair to say that Marsh, not going to be what the Angels thought, pretty much going to be what you've seen with the Phillies and going to sit a lot against some good pitching. Like, I just think that's going to be the sauce there with him. But he still has seven stolen bases. And uh, Marsh, a really good player. I don't, I don't know, though. Like, 26% owned if I can't make lineup moves every week and I and, – and they're facing lefties, I'm just not sure that I would play him over the course of a week. Yeah, I mean, I just, uh, I mean, I think sadly there's really not, uh, there's really not much of a reason to roster Brandon Marsh in, uh, you know, in, in a mixed league. Uh, definitely not in a 12-team league, maybe on the very peripheral of a 15-team league, but you're not going to get enough plate appearances. He also is, uh, I mean, look, he, crazy, he's drawing stone dead to a good lineup spot. <laughs> Brandon Marsh was like the hottest hitter in baseball. For, you remember that month last year where it was like, oh, he's the best hitter on the team. And they, they, the highest he moved up was to seventh in the order. They just, they, they're they just not interested. You know, they're not replacing Nick Castellanos or Kyle Schwarber or Bryce Harper or any of these incredible hitters with, with Brandon Marsh. It's just not going to – and he strikes out too much also to be that high. You know, he's a 30% K-rate guy. You don't want that guy top four spot in the order anyways. Lefty. I, I think I think you probably just leave him. I think I think you let someone else get excited about Brandon Marsh. Sadly, yeah. All right, uh, let's go to the A's. Abraham Toro. I, I think this is his third team. Actually, playing pretty well this year. He's up to about forty-one percent owned. Playing a little infield, a little outfield. Uh, Oakland does you know that platoon thing mostly. They also lost one of their key infielders. I, I think for almost the season, he's out on the sixty-day uh, injured list there. So. Uh, look, Toro's going to play a little bit. Oakland's going to hit a little bit, Davis. I, I think that's kind of what's going to happen here. And, uh, you know, certainly since he's gotten more playing time lately, the numbers have ticked up. They have, but, I mean, Abraham Toro, is like you you look uh, in, in your baseball dictionary of replacement level middle infielder who's really useful for his real-life team, not that useful for your fantasy baseball team. I mean, uh, he has been in Major League Baseball since 2019. He has 32 home runs and, and 12 steals. He plays on a decidedly below average, not that, not the worst offense in baseball, right? We thought maybe it'd be the worst offense. They're not, but yeah, he's, you know, he's going to hit, he's going to hit two, 
40 maybe in a good year. Maybe you get to like he just yeah, I think you I think you probably just leave Abraham Toro for someone else. All right, finally, the uh, red hot Connor Wong, catcher for the Boston Red Sox. Hey, look, 20% owned, two catcher league, Davis. I'll bite here, you know? Like, I'll, I'll t- he may not play more than like three days a week, but I'll bite on somebody like this, especially two catcher league. Yeah, uh, you, and I, you and I could not be more aligned on this. You find, me, you find me any catcher who I think I can maybe get 10 home runs out of and, uh, and maybe even get a cheeky stolen base. He had eight stolen bases and 403 plate appearances. Because remember, NFBC, 15-team leagues, 30 catchers are going to be starters. Is yeah. Connor Wong a top 30 catcher? I think he probably is pretty clearly uh, a top 30 catcher. So I, I would spend um, you know, some decent fab money on Connor Wong. All right, coming up next, it's time for us to dive into the pitchers on the waiver wire in fantasy baseball. Then we'll talk some NBA in hour number two. We'll also update you on anything interesting happening, of course, at the PGA Championship, which, by the way, is now back underway. They had a delay due to fog. So more coming up on that uh, later this afternoon, game time decisions. we got, of course, betting uh, above the rim and everything else happening here on Fantasy Sports Today. For those of you who are into fantasy content, maybe you are tuning in saying, hey, where can I get some more? Uh, tomorrow morning, Joe Pizapia and Matt Stryker have another two hours of fantasy baseball talk and fantasy content as well. So make sure you tune into that show as well. But for right now, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll hit the waiver wire once again for some streaming pitching options coming up next right here on Fantasy Sports Today. Look at the Denver Nuggets and say, whoa, just a week ago, they were that minus 115 or so price. Now we're looking at them at a 7 to 1 price. Any chances the Nuggets can actually come back? That could be scored six or seven games, so I think that could be a little bit of a tighter spread between those two. But when you got those two guys, those two monsters, and, and Towns and, and Edwards, it's just really hard. The early line, only on Sports Grid. Every missed call, the entire game, whether it's a charge or a block or, a, a, you know, a, a deflection that was wrong or a foul that should have called that wasn't called or vice versa, give me a 48-minute report. And people that will understand that there's so many mistakes that the referees make over the course of the game that referees, ready folks, just don't decide the outcome. Betting above the rim, only on SportsGrid. It's smarter to be on SportsGrid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. The early line. Magical and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In Game Live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late Night. This sort of written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Good morning. Welcome back to Fantasy Sports Today here on Sports Grid. It's time now for us to dive into the very latest in fantasy baseball, which means it's waiver wire week. It's the decisions that you have to make for the players that are available on the waiver wire. And let's start off with a player that I think is kind of too late on, to be honest with you. This number does not seem right, but of course, Sam, we've got to trust our producer here. 54% owned. How's this possible, Davis? John Gray? 
1.90 ERA, 52 strikeouts, 14 walks. Look, I, I know that there's got to be some skepticism with Gray, but they don't have Scherzer. They don't have DeGrom. Yavaldi's been hurt. John Gray is pitching. He's pitching well. How is he on the waiver wire anymore at this point? Oh, uh, I mean, look, you remember these numbers we draw from Fantasy Pros, not from the NFBC. So this includes, uh, I mean, all kinds of leagues, right? Yahoo, ESPN, NFBC, like all of the major stuff. I actually run into this all the time in fantasy football season because I do the uh, the waiver wire content for us here on on Sports Grid, and it'll you know someone will always be like not in my league come on this this guy's never been this guy was drafted in the ninth round in my league but there definitely will be leagues where john gray are available because i mean craig look the the history of, of john gray is uh is one of let's say very mixed results for john gray uh he's, he's age 32 years old he was definitely viewed as when he was really young i mean this is how long i've been doing fantasy baseball and uh and fantasy sports i you know i remember john gray getting called up. I remember John Gray. Oh, John Gray is going to be one of these pitchers who can, who can figure out cores. His strikeout stuff is so good. You'll be able to start him in his home games in, in Colorado. Uh, that never <clears throat> really materialized. I, I suppose actually in 2017, he, he basically was good. And then he led uh, all of baseball and earned runs allowed in 2018. Yeah. If John Gray's out there, pick him up. I mean, you're, you're locked into, he'll get you 11 more wins the rest of the way. 3.3 ERA ish the rest of the way. He will be a very good pitcher for you in starting uh, in, in fantasy baseball. All right. Now let's go to the Baltimore Orioles and Dean Kramer under 40% owned in fantasy leagues. Another team that just needs five innings from a starter because their offense is really good. Kramer has been great this year. 47 strikeouts, 46 innings on pace to have the best season of his career. Only 15 walks Davis in 46 innings pitch. So uh, you know, naturally 38% own. There's always that scary moment when a guy like this, Davis, could go into a place like the Bronx or somewhere else and, you know, just, you know, have a really bad game. But generally speaking, with, with the lack of pitching that's out there, uh, hard for me to believe that you could look at a guy like this and at least not stream him over the course of the year. I mean, 100% he looks like a streamer to me, particularly because when Dean Kramer has been – I, I think a lot of people probably remember the very beginning of his career when he he was bad. Uh, so like the first three years of his career, he really was not good. Last season, he got 32 starts in, and he was about as league average as you can get. You know, actually a dead average, 3.23 uh, league average ERA last season, 22% strikeout rate, you know, 40% hard hit rate. Like if you were just to go into chat GPT and say, will you show me what an American league league average starting pitcher looks like? It would be Dean Kramer. And in years past, uh, particularly when, uh, you know, when starting pitchers struck out guys more or staying more healthy, maybe a guy like Dean Kramer, you wouldn't really want to put in your starting lineup. But when, you know, Logan, we just talked about Logan Gilbert, brutal last week. How many, how many pitcher injuries have we already had this season? Like if you don't have Tarek Skubal, do you even feel good about your pitching staff in any, in any league? I, I mean, honestly, like you, you really probably do not. So Dean Kramer to me is definitely worth the, uh, the fab money. You know, speaking of Skubal, uh, Davis, everyone knows the pitchers in the Tigers rotation for the most part, but I don't think a lot of people knew who this guy was. Reese Olsen going into the season, just an afterthought, now being picked up in almost half the leagues that he's playing in. 47 innings pitch, 41 strikeouts, 2.09 earned run average. I mean, maybe the Tigers thought a lot about him, but certainly in, in fantasy circles this offseason, you couldn't get anybody to say, hey, I'm buying on Reese Olsen. No, when we when we talk about uh, when we talk about the Detroit Tigers, we talk about Scooble, we talk about Mize, we talk about Matt Manning. You know these guys who have been in their farm system forever. Weirdly enough, the two best pitchers on their side. I mean, Scooble definitely has been awesome, and then Olson, and then even Flaherty actually has been better than than Mize and Manning. Olson, I would hesitate to you know be like, oh, this is the next great that uh, you know he's going to be as good as Scooble, he's going to be a, as good as uh, as Mize. I think it probably would go the other direction. the The best thing he's got going for him, he does not walk anyone. He he does not give up free passes. Um, last season he only gave up thirty three walks in uh, in twenty one starts, so that is pretty strong. He also is not allowed a home run the entire season uh, with a, with a fifty five percent ground ball rate. So again, Olsen would be a guy I would feel comfortable spending on. 
Finally, we'll always speculate on closers this time of the year. Kyle Finnegan, 17 innings pitched, 1.56 earned run average with 13 strikeouts, 68% owned. And uh, yeah, Sam's our producer. He threw a Washington Nationals player in at the end. I mean, is there anything else to say? Kyle Finnegan should not be unowned in any fantasy league, but he snuck one by us here. No, I mean, look, again, though, these these shallower leagues, someone like this definitely could be like a... If I was to do a fantasy baseball league, I probably uh, would, you know, with my friends or whatever, 10-team league, 10-team mixed league, Kyle Finnegan, very good chance of, of not being of not being owned because Kyle Finnegan has mostly been a, a, a pretty mediocre relief pitcher for, for a huge chunk of his career. Uh, 13 saves, though, already. I mean, leading the na- – how, how many people had the Washington Nationals closer – leading the National League in saves on May 18th, Craig. Probably not very many people. Yeah, I mean, let, let's double down on it. How, how many people would have had the Padres letting go of Josh Hader and their best player in fantasy, truthfully, has been the closer in Robert Suarez. Yes, he's been the best closer in baseball. This, ah, you know, maybe Mason Miller. Is that fair to say on Oakland? Eh, probably so. Now, how about the National League? Let's go with that. I mean, have you guys not learned your lesson this season? Who had Mason Miller as the best closer? Who had Suarez as the best closer? Who had Finnegan? But no, every year, every year, let's do it. Let, let's take Jordan Romano. Let's spend all that money on Jordan Romano. And then people tell us that that's the way to go. You got to get, you have to do this to get the elite closers in baseball. We'll be doing this show next year. We'll be saying the same thing. All right, coming up next, we look at the odds to win the MVP in the AL and NL. Don't go away. Great, great. Look at the Denver Nuggets and say, whoa, just a week ago, they were that minus 115 or so price. Now we're looking at them at a 7 to 1 price. Any chances the Nuggets can actually come back? That could be still six or seven games, so I think that could be a little bit of a tighter spread between those two. But when you got those two guys, those two monsters, and, and Towns and Ant Edwards, it's just really hard. The early line, only on Sports Grid. Every missed call, the entire game, whether it's a charge or a block or, a, a, you know, a, a deflection that was wrong or a foul that should have been called that wasn't called or vice versa, give me a 48-minute report. And people that will understand that there's so many mistakes that the referees make over the course of the game that referees, ready folks, just don't decide the outcome. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. The early line. Magical and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions. Is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In game live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late sort Night. Of let down, written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Time to take a look at the latest odds in baseball on the American League and National League MVP. Uh, top of the hour, we'll take a break, come back, and start diving into the NBA Daily Fantasy and talk some baseball fantasy reality. Gray Albright will join us, Adam Kaufman, some great guests as well. Uh, real quick, Davis, let's run through the odds here. And the big change, I think, in the American League is seeing Kyle Tucker now jump up to 12-1 to 1 over on the FanDuel Sportsbook. He has been red hot. Soto's still the favorite. You see Witt right there. 
Uh, Judge has had a good week. He's four to one. Gunnar Henderson is in there, and so is Tucker. Uh, you know, it's. I think it's still too early to say it's a four player race. I mean, we still are just in May, and anything can happen. And so certainly Rutschman or anyone else outside of that can jump in. But to me, Tucker is the jump here where uh, all of a sudden his numbers, by the way, are going to look as good or better than anyone else uh, on this list. It's just that his team has not played well. His team has not played well. And I mean, that'll probably be the issue in the end, right? Is, is there going to be teams? I mean, there are a couple teams in the American League who could do like the Yankees could win. 100 games the the Orioles could win 95 games you know we'll we'll see what ends up happening there I mean to me it feels like this is just the season of the Orioles like and maybe that is my own perspective shading it in the American League but I think in the end they will be the story they just called up another one of their kids yesterday Kyle Stowers so I feel like getting some the good plus money on on Gunnar Henderson on Rutschman is is an a pretty interesting way to bet these markets because I just feel like in the end, the Orioles are going to be getting multiple awards at, at the end of the season. Maybe, and maybe I'll be wrong. Uh, I mean, particularly if the Yankees win hundred games and I'll definitely be wrong, but that is just sort of my feeling leading into it. All right, let's take a look at the National League MVP where Mookie Betts is as big a favorite in May as you're ever going to see plus 165. Otani is three and a half to one DH only with bets in play. Kind of hard to see that happening, to be honest with you. Then you have Contreras, of Milwaukee's had a great year. Tatis 12 to 1. I still think Harper is in the mix here at 12 to 1 as well. And I, and look, it has not been uh, an Acuna season like we saw last year. So he's gone from about 4 or 5 to 1 to 25 to 1, and I suppose he could pick it up at any time, although there's been no indication of that as of yet. Yeah, I I look, if you're going to make one bet on this market, it's Ronald Acuña Jr. and it's not particularly close. Ronald Acuña Jr. could wake up tomorrow, Craig and in a week, he could hit five home runs, steal three. Like It's just like we know beyond a shadow of a doubt if he's not injured, he is one of the five best players. Behind William Contreras in National League MVP, I mean, come on. Let, like, let's be, let's, be, uh, let's be a rational market. They're, they're really – how could William Contreras win NL MVP? He, he, it's just like he is ineligible. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just <laughs> no, no, no disrespect to the Contreras family, but you're, it's ineligible. not going to happen. Yeah, he is. Yeah, you look at it. It's you not, like, not you want to say you want to say Wilson, you know? It's not Wilson. It's his brother Wilson. It's not. Yeah, it's his, it's his younger brother, right? He's had a great year. Let's give him credit for that. All right, the Cy Young. Sure. It looks like I'm gonna. I, I'm probably gonna hit this one before the year, so that's cool by me. Uh, Scooble is now down to the heavy, heavy favorite to win the Cy Young, plus one eighty. All all he's got to do, Davis, is be healthy the rest of the season. He's gonna win the Cy Young. Burns is plus three ninety. The rest of the players are sort of inconsistent here. It's good to see some of these other names here, but I, I do think this is a short race here. I think it's a two-player race between Scooble and Burns. I mean, I think you're, I think you're probably right. I mean, look, I would love for for Cole Reagans to win this award, but it's not happening. No, no chance. Yeah. It's, uh, I think it's, it's Burns. Scoo- I mean, if Scooble misses some time for injury, I guess could Burns win it if Corbin Burns wins twenty games? That maybe would be a little bit interesting. I mean, he's got three wins right now, so he's got he's obviously it's a long road to hoe. I mean, how long is it? Do we even have? Do we even have twenty game winners in Major League Baseball? No. Probably not, right? Probably just doesn't happen. No. Uh, National League is a little bit murkier. Uh, Zach Wheeler and Ranger Suarez, same team, three to one, eight to one. Glass now seven to one. Cease has been awesome, seven to one. But here's a show to Imanaga right there, seven and a half to one. He's a favorite to win the Rookie of the Year. I guess that's going to hurt him because they're not going to want to give the rookie of the year and the Cy Young to the same player, but they easily could. I mean, he leads baseball in every pitching category, all of them. Name name a pitching category, Imanaga, number one. I mean, yeah, I would I would bet on him and just say he finds a way uh, to keep it going. Yeah, come on, it's it's got. In fact, I'm going to go bet it right now when we go to break. I just want to have that to root for. Well, you already have rookie of the year, so maybe you want to double down on the on the uh, Cy Young as well. All right, Adam Kaufman will join us coming up next. Gray Albright, we got the Sports Grid 60, Fantasy or Reality, and a whole lot more. Any updates of the PGA Championship, we will give them to you. This is Fantasy Sports Today here on Sports Grid, and we got another hour to go, so keep it locked here where it's smarter to be on Sports Grid. This is FST. We'll be right back. <laughs> 